The information in this video is provided for informational and educational purposes only. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Morale Monologue. My name is Michael Morale. In today's video, I want to discuss a topic with you that's been circulating within the SMA community. Now that the COVID-19 vaccine has been approved, many SMA patients are wondering if they should not only get the vaccine, but also be prioritized so that they could receive it before those who would be considered able-bodied. This video will discuss not only the COVID-19 vaccine, I'll also share the CDC's vaccine rollout schedule and give you my opinions on what to do. Let's get started. The information in red was taken verbatim from the SMA News Today article. A link to this entire article can be found in the description of my video. The Muscular Dystrophy Association is encouraging the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to recommend that people living with neuromuscular diseases have early access to any federally approved COVID-19 vaccine. Many of you have sent me questions asking whether or not SMA patients should take the COVID-19 vaccine. And while I plan on getting the vaccine, this is a question that you definitely need to speak to your doctors about, whether it be your neurologist or your primary care physician. The following three paragraphs are very informative, and I'll share my thoughts in just a moment. The MDA made its request in a letter to members of the CDC Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices who were helping to guide the allocation and distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. The MDA represents more than 300,000 U.S. residents who have one of some 40 neuromuscular diseases. So far, ACIP discussions about which patient population group should be among the first to get a vaccine have included people with high-risk medical conditions, such as cancer and chronic kidney disease. But those with disorders such as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, spinal muscular atrophy, and muscular dystrophy are not on the list of those recommended for early immunization. Along with governmental and advisory bodies, including the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, the ACIP is recommending that vaccine administration be rolled out in phases. In the ACIP's proposed structure, vaccinations would occur in three phases, with populations such as healthcare workers, nursing home residents, and other members at high risk for severe COVID-19 in Phase 1A. The Centers for Disease Control has established three phases of the vaccine rollout. Phase 1A would be for healthcare personnel and long-term care facility residents. Phase 1B would be for essential workers, such as those in the education sector, food and agriculture, utilities, police, firefighters, correction officers, and those in the transportation field. Phase 1C would be for adults with high-risk medical conditions and adults 65 years of age or older. This rollout schedule from the CDC is just their recommendations that the various states should follow, but each state will set their own guidelines with regards to their particular rollout schedule. Neuromuscular diseases vary greatly in symptom severity and patient experience, but they generally involve the peripheral nervous system, resulting in progressive muscle weakness that affects skeletal muscles and muscles of internal organs. Symptoms can include cardiac, pulmonary, neurological, digestive, and sometimes immunological problems. Additional common symptoms in neuromuscular diseases could lead to a higher risk of negative outcomes from COVID-19 the letter states. For example, neuromuscular diseases can weaken the pulmonary muscle diaphragm over the progression of the disease, increasing the risk of severe pulmonary infection and making the outcome of COVID-19 particularly dangerous. In addition, neuromuscular disease patients often are prescribed corticosteroids to ease muscle weakening. The CDC has said individuals who receive such treatments might be at increased risk for severe COVID-19 due to an associated weakening of the immune system, the letter states. Given the fact that those of us with SMA already experience compromised immune systems and breathing difficulties, COVID-19 poses a risk that could be much more detrimental to us versus those who are considered able-bodied. My recommendation is that you speak to your doctors as soon as possible to get their input so that the both of you can decide as to whether or not this vaccine would benefit you. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you got some information out of it that you can use as well. Don't forget, 
Contact your doctors as soon as possible to determine as to whether or not this vaccine will be right for you. Also, don't forget to check out the description field in my video. I've linked the article that I used during this video so that you can open it up and read the entire article for yourself. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the SMA News Today YouTube channel. We would greatly appreciate it. Remember, when you do subscribe, be sure to click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified of any new videos that we produce. We at SMA News Today hope all of you have had a fantastic day. Do me a favor this upcoming week. Do something for yourself that's going to make you a better person. Until next time, take care of yourself, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye.